Hello, my name is Nicole, and today we're talking about inner purity, because Jesus taught the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law about inner purity. And the reason why this topic today is so important is because some of you all are going to churches and they're fabulous. They've got the nice carpeting, very nice seats, beautiful architecture. You come in and you're in awe. The ceilings are so high. The paneling in some of these churches is dated from many, many years ago, but it still has a beautiful quality to it. The walls are painted with beautiful designs and art decorations and things of that sort. So you get the picture that I'm beginning to paint. Everything looks beautiful on the outside. But then when you start moving in, when you start getting inside the church, the background, when you start going behind the closed doors, when you visit the bathrooms, when you check the closets, you find out that some people are there as gatekeepers. You saw enough. Okay, now you can go back to your seat. You don't need to be bothering us with all your questions right now. Go back to your seat. You, you're too curious right now. Go back to your seat. The leadership makes up excuses as to why they can't let you see certain things. They make up excuses as to why they do certain things. You see, that beautiful architecture was nothing more than a distraction to keep you from getting to where you need to go and that is to the heart to the heart of truth to find out exactly what makes this person or group or even if you're in maintenance the building tick Jesus wanted us to know that it wasn't about outside appearances, man's traditions, women's traditions that made one clean. But it was about one's heart, what was on the inside. You find out a lot about people by the way they behave, those that are walking with you. You find out a lot about them when you get to know them. They looked real handsome. They looked real beautiful on the, in, on the outside. And then in time, you start learning about the inside. And you find out that there is something going on that is destroying the beauty that you once fell in love with. You see, the enemy doesn't want us to get to know what's on the inside, just like he doesn't want you to go behind the scenes of that beautiful church and look in those closets and check those file cabinets and look at the paperwork. He doesn't want you to do all of that. All he wants you to do is sit down and watch the show. And every now and again, if I need you, I will ask you to participate in the show. Let's get into Mark chapter 7. And this is pretty much where I'm going to be from verses 1 down to 23. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. 
the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles, and some of you all are very much aware of the washing of feet. Okay, let me stop right there. So right away, we already know that man's tradition is covering something. So oh, it doesn't have to be covering anything. You're just reading into it. No, man's traditions always cover up true intent. Man has his reasons for doing things. There are those reasons that everybody is privy to. And then there are those reasons that only a select few, and sometimes just him, know about. So right away, we see that traditions are taking precedence over the word of the Lord. Reading on, so the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You see, we're admiring those traditions from Christmas to Labor Day to Memorial Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. We're looking at all of those lovely holidays and the connections that they have with the church. And then we look at those holidays in the Bible and their connection with the church. And we're so caught up in all of the warmth and glows and pretty pictures and nice phrases and people standing up and being honored that we don't see what's really going on as Jesus said these people they were honoring him with their lips but their hearts were far from him some people are honoring different people in the church but to have them get involved with anything else well no you just sit there when I need you for the show I'll call on you so all of this praising and worshiping to be seen by men and women that some of these churches are participating in especially on television it's vain doesn't hold any substance and that's why some people just do what they do that's why some people are totally comfortable sinning while serving the Lord reading on you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men and he said to them you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions uh oh there's a problem, isn't there? According to the NIV Study Bible, it says the Pharisees added hundreds of their own petty rules and regulations to God's holy laws. And then they tried to force people to follow these rules. These men claim to know God's will in every detail of life. There are still religious leaders today who add rules and regulations to God's word, causing much confusion among believers. It is idolatry to claim that your interpretation of God's word is as important as God's word itself. It is especially dangerous to set up unbiblical standards for others to follow. Instead, look to Christ for guidance about your own behavior and let him lead others in the details of their lives. So, this is what's going on. We're so caught up in the traditions the traditions that we set aside what the Lord wants us to do somebody stands up in front of everyone in the church and says the Lord told me to tell you that we need to stop celebrating 
Christmas in the church, putting the Christmas tree next to the cross. And then the leadership says, what? What? Okay, we'll have to discuss this after service. I'm just telling you what the Lord says. That's that's fine, brother, but we, we've got to talk about this later. And then he proceeds with the service. See, God doesn't want us to take any tradition and make that the focal point. Instead, if we're going to consecrate things to the Lord, then we need to make sure that what is being said, what is being talked about, is based on the Lord as well. Reading on, for Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. Now, some people will take that scripture, as I've said in other audio, and they'll say, oh, well, then that means we need to create a holiday. And we need to celebrate the Mother's Day, mothers and the fathers, and, you know, just set aside that time for them in God's church. Really? Aren't we supposed to be sharing the gospel? Aren't we supposed to be using that time to talk about the things that are troubling us and how we can look to God for healing? Aren't we supposed to be using that valuable time for those things? You see man's secular traditions along with man's religious traditions have showed up in the church. And those, of course, who are being honored, well, you don't want to say anything, right? Because we're getting some kind of benefit. Reading on, but you say that if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is Corbin, that means a gift devoted to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Hmm. Seems like there would be some people who's listening to Jesus feeling convicted, wouldn't they? And they're probably getting a little bit angry, too. Like the man who I used as an example who stood up and told the minister about having a Christmas tree next to the cross. So there's an attitude, I'm sure, a negative one growing. Reading on, again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of us that makes us unclean, church. It's what you're saying. It's what you're, what you're doing. You're lying. You're cheating. You're deceiving. You're making excuses for, for things that you do. You're going around here and you're telling people, oh, it's okay. It's all right. You go and you look for scriptures to back up things that God didn't even tell you was okay to do. You're mixing in man-made traditions and then putting God's stamp on it when God didn't even give you the stamp to put on those traditions. You see, we're getting ourselves into trouble. And so when that non-believer, that unsaved person comes into our camp, he's looking around, she's looking around, and she's saying, what is this? This doesn't look any different than what I came from. I came from a background that dealt with the Luciferian philosophy. I came from a background that, you know, uh, uh, was all about uh, materialism and things of that sort. I mean, when I come here, it's really no different. Matter of fact, let me just put my feet up and rest a while because, you know, the only difference is, is that you guys are talking about God and we talked about Satan or we talked about uh, Buddha or we talked about this God or that God. That's all. But it's pretty much the same thing. And so nobody gets convicted. Nobody gets changed. Nobody really uh, does anything different with their lives. Because too many churches are trying to use traditions to lull people in. And it's secular traditions. And because they're doing that, they're actually suppressing the word of the Lord. They're decorating up these buildings. People are coming in and, oh, wow, this is wonderful. Can I go in and check out some other things, some other programs? Can I do some things in the church? Can I tell you what the Lord has shared with me? Oh, no, no, mm -mm. no, that's not welcome here. 
just sit down and then when I need you to participate in this show, I'll call you. And then some are bad about doing that. I can't tell you how many lists that I've put my name on when I would visit some churches and didn't get a call back. I can't tell you how many groups that I have gone to, just little Bible study groups over the years, and people, they didn't call you. They didn't follow up with you. It's sad. It is so sad because you're... You may have questioned something like me. I'm the kind of person I sit there, I listen to what people say, and I like to participate in the discussion. And so if there's somebody in that group that doesn't like me or maybe I'm too verbal or maybe they don't like the tone of my voice or whatever, well, somebody conveniently forgets my email. Somebody conveniently forgets my phone number, you, you know, because they already can see the profile. They done dealt with enough folks like you, right? So they can already see the profile uh oh, this one might be a troublemaker because this one is one of those sold out for Jesus types. And we can't have this person coming in disrupting our tradition. We can't have her coming in here talking to us about why we shouldn't have uh, these Christmas decorations all over the place. We can't have her coming in here telling us that we need to stop having our Easter egg hunt. You, you, see, they want their traditions. They want to... to um, put this God label all over them when in fact if you do some deep study on on these holidays you'll find out that they're pagan and that they're not about God's business from the beginning but you know you want to be like the world right so you put a God label on it you like a certain musical sound and even though it sounds like an artist that is uh, secular and he has a bunch of cuss words on it so what you do is you just take all the cuss words out put in some positive lyrics but keep the same beat and draw people in that way that you know there's a whole bunch of tricks and I hate to say it but there's a whole bunch of tricks that uh, believers as well as unbelievers use to make money off of people and at the same time make them feel good because aren't we in this generation of let's feel good let's do things to make people feel good Let's do things so that when they feel good, they'll give us more, more money, more time, more this, more that. Mm -hmm. This isn't, I'm noticing more and more when I visit churches that it's, it's more about making people feel good than convicting people, than telling people the truth. Okay, so I'm reading on. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked? <laughs> See, I like, this is boldness. This is truth. This is, I'm not concerned about, oh, you're offending me. I'm not concerned about, oh, political correctness. I'm just speaking truth. See, I like that. Okay, that's, that's what Jesus is all about, speaking truth. Okay, going back to the scripture. Are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come, check this out now, pay close attention to this, because we all got these issues, and all these people, one thing I'm going to just kind of digress just a moment before I get into this, is there's too many folks out here saying that they're good. And that everything's right with me and I don't have these kind of issues and that kind of issues. Can I say in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, reveal to these people who think that everything is all good and I don't have anything wrong with my heart, myself. Can you just reveal to them behind closed doors the, the truth about them? Because that's what we've got to do as believers. I know I've had to do this and I do it some more. Just show me who am I really. And in this way, I can be able to say, okay, this is who I am, Lord Jesus. Um, and can you just wipe me clean? Can you clean me? Men are washing the outside of their bodies. They're making sure that their churches are beautiful. They're making sure that the, the wedding is wonderful. They're making sure that their car is nice and clean and shiny. But inside, the man is, and now I'm going back into the scriptures, the man has evil thoughts. He has sexual immorality. He's a, a, a thief. 
murder, adulterer, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. We've got to take that out there and share that. Okay, while we're talking about Jesus, share what Jesus said. We're always talking about the miracles and the signs and the wonders of Jesus, the feel good messages. Speak the truth. Meet those people where they are. I said this in another audio. Meet them where they are. I've got these evil thoughts that are just surrounding me. I mean, every time I every time I get ready to do something, the evil thought just shows up. What is that all about? What that's all about is you've got to look at yourself and see what you keep entertaining yourself with. Every time I, I, you know, get ready to want to just lay down, I just have this need that I just got to get some sex. I just got to get something, you know. What is that all about? Consider what you've been listening to. Consider the women you were staring at all day. Consider the, the, the men that you were lusting over. Look at the pictures that are coming across your news feed on Facebook. Look at all that stuff. See, that's what's causing it. So now you've got to start disconnecting yourself from that. Quit telling people, pray for me, pray for me, and then you don't even want to take that effort to start cutting these things off. And then you keep wondering about your salvation, and you keep wondering, what's going on with me? Why can't I get this thing right inside my head? Why I keep having this roller coaster ride of emotions? Why is it that one day I'm in love with God, and the next day I'm not? It's because of it's a battle of good and evil. You keep allowing evil stuff to permeate in that mind, it mess with your eyes, mess with your ears. Mess with your fingertips and everything else. Until we get right with the Lord, we can't we can't do anything for anyone. The church is not going to help us because you already see, like I said, they're bringing the secular stuff inside. The minute you see the foolishness showing up in the church and the pastor is trying to justify the, tr the holidays and everything else. OK, you by using scripture, that's when you should say mm -mm, this church is not for me. Because I'm going to help some of you all find the right church because I just feel in my spirit right now that somebody, some, no, not somebody, but a group of individuals is trying to find that right church. Sometimes you've got to do what I'm doing right now. You've got to fall back. You've got to fall back from the church visiting. You've got to fall back sometimes from uh, different um, 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 speakers and things of that sort. You've got to fall back from that television watching. Oh, my goodness, because we already know that's nothing but a word of faith movement. And look that up because you'll find out that that prosperity message is breaking people, bankrupting people. You're not getting everything that you thought you were going to get. Matter of fact, God, a lot of times have already said that there's your blessing. You didn't even have to give nobody twenty dollars or fifty or a hundred or a thousand because it was already on its way. It was already on its way. And you know it. You know, if you're real with yourself, you'll say, you know what? Let me look at my look at my dates. Let me look at my calendar dates. I already had put that request in on such and such day. So now it's here in between that time. I didn't need to give nobody any money for that blessing to come forth. People trying to associate the money, connect the money that they gave with something that they were already due to get. Come on. We're not stupid. And people get up there in front of the church and say silly things. Like, I, I, I got this and it was because all my giving. No, you got it because you went out there and you sat there for the interviews. You put your resume out there. You, you got that blessing because you had a, a lawsuit that was already in the works. Come on now. And then you have ministers that will even go so far as to say, well, you released your blessing when you gave the money. Praise God. My blessing was already due. Okay. In Jesus name. And I didn't have to pay for that. Jesus paid it already. Hall hallelujah. Now, tithes and offerings, I understand that the Lord moves on our spirit to give. But the Lord moves on our spirit to give. Not man. The Lord. And But as I understand some people, they don't hear from the Lord. So therefore, you need a messenger. But come on, every single week, God got to get money from you every single week. Come on now. Let's we've got to get serious, church. We've got to get serious. We got to stop playing these games because we've got some very intelligent people out here that do use their critical thinking skills that are not um, of this sheep mentality where they don't see anything but the shepherd. These are the kind of sheep that let me just kind of hang behind the group a little bit and let me eat a little bit more before I go with him. 
Okay. That you want to be that sheep. You don't want to be that first sheep in line. Ready. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to go wherever you say I'm ready to go. Mm -mm. Hang behind a little bit. You say, oh, well, a wolf might get me. No, if you got God with you, if you got God with you, ain't, no wolf is going to get you. If you got God with you, you know, some people want to just, just connect everything to just material things and, and what they see and what they feel that they don't have a clue about God and how he operates. God don't operate in this dimension. God sees things and knows, knows things and, and does things in his own time frame. And all this running around and shouting and jumping up and down sometimes for things that the Lord has already told you. It's not your time yet. It's not your time and you know it. You're not going to make God move any faster. And I realized that myself. I have realized, I had, I mean, it took a long time because I thought if I just put my hands up because the minister said, and I just called down the blessings of God because the minister said that God's going to give it to me right then and there. I can't tell you how many times I left the church disappointed. So we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful getting caught up with all of the, the traditions and the programs and the rituals and all of that. Get into the word of the Lord and see what the Lord says. We have to have the type of spirit within us that's ready to receive what God is giving us. But you cannot receive what God is giving you when you're not willing to do the things that he's moving in your spirit to do. Such as cutting things off that's giving you the evil thoughts. Such as cutting things off that's putting you in a position to be sexually immoral. Such as cutting things off that make you want to steal or murder. There's some people that's in relationships right now that every time, every time you get into some type of dispute, you're ready to kill. Forget, forget just, I'm going to tell her off. I'm going to just tell him off. No, you're ready to take somebody out. Cut that person off. Love ain't worth that. And matter of fact, when it gets to that level, love is gone. You're where Cain and Abel, you, you know, where Cain was with Abel. I'm ready to kill somebody. So that, you know, that's not the love. And then you've got adultery going on. I don't like my relationship in the way it's going. So I'm going to just find somebody who is going to give me what I need. I don't need to be dealing with this. Da, 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 da. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. You see, because when all of this stuff happens spiritually for you, where you said to yourself, I'm going to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. You did it. But at the time when you did it, you had all of this stuff on the inside of you and going to churches that don't speak like this, that don't tell you that you've got some inner workings that are not right with the Lord and need to be flushed out. If they don't talk to you like that, you're just going to keep carrying these things. And most people don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. I mean, you don't want to go up to somebody and say, listen, even though you, you might want to, especially if it's a big problem for you. But listen, I got this issue with greed. I can't get enough of this, that and the other. And then some people, I don't know, I, 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 I got issues with with being deceitful. I mean, I like to get my way, so I'll, I'll do just about anything to get my way. Uh, I got these feelings of jealousy. I mean, I just can't. I just can't. I just don't like no one dealing with my, my children and my, my woman and my man. I, I just can't. Mm -mm. And so these issues that are boiling, boiling and they, they grow up inside of you. If you're not in an atmosphere where you feel comfortable expressing those things, then it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to um, see sin for what it is. So what the church don't tell you is you can do this on your own. 
You don't need to wait until lesson five where we get into uh, slander, arrogance, and folly. No, you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is work on that stuff right now by talking to the Lord, telling him what's going on, and then cutting everything off around you that's not about, you know, the Lord's business. But some people, they they don't get that part of it. All they want is to go into that atmosphere that's got the pretty decorations and just do what the minister says. Sit down and when called upon, I'll perform in the show. Come on now, church. Come on now. And when you see, like I said before, when you see that things are are overriding what God is talking to you about man's traditions are taking precedence over his word don't walk any further turn around leave well thank you so much for listening I hope somebody is going to be free from this issue today and I pray in Jesus name that you will be around those individuals that are about God's business. Thanks for listening.